Okay. I'll give it two more minutes. Thanks everybody for uh, for joining us. We'll wait a few minutes for people to arrive. Grant, I think you should, I think you should run out into the hallway and just just grab them. <laughs> just chase them in here. All right, we'll get started. Thanks, everybody. I'm Dax De Silva, founder of Age of Union, and I'm I'm joined today with uh, by Paul Rosalie, uh, founder of Jungle Keepers. Uh, we're going to be making a, a a big announcement today about our partnership uh, for the Amazon rainforest. But let us introduce ourselves before we begin, uh, and introduce the, uh, the the two organizations. Age of Union Alliance has has been around for about a year. Uh, was established in October 2021. It's a conservation uh, alliance of environmental projects. My background is uh, I'm actually a tech tech founder of a local uh, tech company called Lightspeed. Uh, Lightspeed is traded on uh, the Toronto Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. Founded that company um, 17 years ago, and I moved from being CEO to chief, uh, uh, sorry, chair uh, this uh, this February. And I knew I wanted to make conservation my primary mission. Uh, the reason for that is because I, I grew up in BC, British Columbia, uh, which, which is blessed with incredible natural, natural beauty. Um, as a teenager, and my, my parents who are African refugees, we spent a lot of time outdoors as, as children. They took me on lots of camping trips and uh, it was uh, you know, overwhelming in terms of, uh, uh, of, of my connection to nature and, and, and its beauty. So uh, when I was 16, there was huge clear cuts in the in the old growth forests of Clackwood Sound on the on Vancouver Island. My stepbrother and I joined those protests. We drove across the island to to reach the protest through hours and hours of clear cut moonscapes, uh, and this this deeply affected me as a, as a as a teen. And I and I swore that when I had the resources, when I had the experience, uh, I would make conservation, uh, you know. Uh, a full-time mission, and that uh, that is happening now with Age of Union. So, it started with a forty million dollar gift in October twenty twenty one, which is now fully allocated across ten projects. Uh, we've we're working on our fourth documentary film, uh, and uh, we've opened an Earth Center, which is an art space in Montreal, uh, which takes people through our uh, through our environmental projects and the results uh, in a very uh, in digital through digital art and, and other means. So, I'm going to show play a short video about the center, and I will tell you a little bit a bit more about how we choose our projects. So the projects, um, you know, I wrote a book in 2019 called Age of Union, Igniting the Changemaker. And so the projects are all based around inspiring changemakers, such as this fellow here. But uh, our, our projects are, so I'll tell you where they are. There's, uh, there's four, four, first of all, there's four in Canada of the 10, two are in Quebec. One's a restoration with Nature Conservancy of Canada of the St. Lawrence River. It's 25 to 30 projects a year, uh, restoring, shore bank, uh, rest restoring shorelines, uh, Restoring the natural filter around Lac Saint Pierre. Uh, we just worked on the, the salt, the Barachois, the salt marsh in your Gaspe. Uh, the other big project that we just announced is Canuck, which is a 265 square kilometer nature reserve um, near Montebello. 
former uh, domain of the French king and now a really uh, contiguous piece of protected wilderness. In BC, there's the, the Pitt River uh, watershed, which is a, a restoration of a, of a big piece of valley bottom, which is really critical for wildlife, that, uh, that over the next five years as we channel more uh, glacial river water into is gonna completely restore. This has all been damaged by logging and a eagle sanctuary on, the, on Vancouver Island in an estuary that's completely surrounded by subdivisions. Uh, then we have if we have projects in the three equatorial forests. Uh, there's jungle keepers in the Peruvian Amazon, uh, a project with forest health alliance and strong roots in Congo, uh, and uh, and uh, a project called Calloate in Indonesia in the Dulan Forest in Borneo. Uh, we also have projects in uh, Trinidad, uh, which with. Um, uh, with nature seekers uh, that, that helps leatherback turtles in the nesting seasons, uh, in a, a re reforestation project in Haiti, uh, and then we have a, a ship with Sea Shepherd called the MY Age of Union, which was christened earlier this year, which is doing ocean conservation because we can't, can't forget uh, what's happening on our oceans, uh, and that's had successful missions uh, raising awareness about dolphin bycatch off the coast of France, and uh, most recently uh, the Africa campaigns in, in collaboration with the governments of Liberia and Gabon. And we have a film on uh, on the Sea Shepherd projects that we just put out called Caught. It premiered at the Toronto Film Festival uh, er, earlier this year, and uh, that could, we could watch that on YouTube. We also have uh, films on the St. Lawrence Project, uh, the Jungle Keepers Project, and um, and there's the project in Congo, there's a film called The Corridor that's uh, that's going to be out in the spring. So we, we we select these projects based on on the on the the merit of the projects, the impact, and we want on the ground boots on the ground projects where we can show results to to audiences on social media through film, things that 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 make everyone. Uh, rally for this decade of action. We need to show folks action so that they don't, um, so that they, that we are showing a new narrative, a new trajectory, uh, a new possibility for the environment, that we don't, we don't descend into eco grief. And that's how the projects are selected and we show that things can be different, that we can create a different future on the environment. So that's, uh, that's kind of the mission of the projects and I think that as we partner with these projects, we uplift conservationists and, and they give us lots of excitement and energy to continue to do our work. And I visited eight of the ten projects. Uh, there's still Haiti and, and um, um, Haiti and, and Indonesia to go to, but I think that, that us being on the ground with each of our projects in this last year also uh, makes, makes, all of, makes the whole effort uh, stronger because we, we understand what it takes in these places to save an ecosystem, to save, save species, to understand the local economic, social, and political context of, of, what, it, of what we are trying to do in terms of action. Um, and so uh, with that, I would like to, to pass it over to, uh, to one of our first projects, Jungle Keepers. We did an initial of investment in their work, and now today we're gonna be announcing a much, much bigger partnership uh, with Paul and his team. So over to Paul to talk about Jungle Keepers. Thank you, Dex. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here. I would like to tell you a little bit about sorry, what I've seen and learned in the Amazon rainforest. And for me, the most effective way to do that is through showing you what we've seen down there. So yeah, anytime you're ready. Um, so a few years ago, there was a lake in the Amazon rainforest. And now this lake was nestled in the Andean cloud forests where they meet the Western Amazon. It's some of the most biodiverse rainforest on the planet. Paddling across this lake in a dugout canoe, we were surrounded by ancient trees covered in vines, bromeliads, orchids, lichens, and tenanted by scores of animal species, reptiles, amphibians, birds, mammals. This is literally avatar on earth. As we fished for piranha in this natural paradise, the man who brought me there told me that it was a place that he had fished at since he was a child. And he said that it was a place that he hoped that he could one day bring his children. And so a year later, we returned with conservationists from around the world to document this untouched ecosystem. But when we returned to the lake, what we found was terrifying. The lake was gone everything was burned. I said, where are we? And my friend turned with tears in his eyes and said, planet Earth, minus one lake. Most people haven't seen the sandstorms 
that are in the Amazon rainforest. And in case you missed that, I'll say it again. There is a human caused desert forming in the headwaters of the Amazon rainforest. Illegal gold miners have cleared over 100,000 acres of primary forest, a scar on the face of this planet that is visible from space. And this isn't the only threat facing this region. Each year, we also watch as the Amazon fires continue to eat away at habitat. In the Madre de Dios, we see it every day. Tentacles of the Trans-Amazon Highway, spreading like a cancer. This is the front lines of the sixth extinction, the conquest of paradise. For over 17 years, I've been learning from the indigenous people of the Madre de Dios, people who are fighting to protect their natural heritage. And together, we've seen the assassination of local conservationists and the devastating loss of habitat. We've learned that the solution to these problems lies in the economic well-being of the people of the region. And it's through the wisdom of our indigenous teachers that we form Jungle Keepers to tackle these issues head on and provide action-based solutions to protect ancient forests before it's too late. We've hired loggers and gold miners as conservation rangers. We've worked closely with native communities like Monte Salvado, Puerto Nuevo, Itoro, La Gente de Cuenca, Las Piedras, whose future depends on the natural wealth of this ecosystem. To date, we've protected almost 50,000 acres of the Amazon rainforest. You know, you, you can't protect the whole thing from the start, but you have to start somewhere to protect the whole thing. We now have proof of concept. We know this works, but this is just the beginning. You know, saving the environment is a nice idea, but if you don't have a plan for implementation, then it doesn't end up as reality. And in conservation, the victories are temporary and it's the losses that are final. I'm actually here today on behalf of the millions of wild heartbeats that hang in the balance. Endangered species cannot write proposals. They can't protest. They can't speak out against the forces driving them to oblivion. And so if I've learned anything in the Amazon, it's that the truth between the trees is that all eyes speak the same language. And that if the animals could speak, it would be to remind us that they were here long before we were, busy making the ecosystems that we depend on for life. And it's because of these last intact ecosystems that there are still places in this world where the rivers run clean and the trees are kings, where life is everywhere, and where the meridian between science and spirituality remain beautifully braided. In the last wild places that are left, each blue morning we dip our hands to drink from the river and watch the mist snarl off the canopy at dawn. And when the sunbeams stroke the golden river, beads of sweat form on our foreheads to rejoin the air. Birds float in and out of the smoky breath of the forest until the clouds scrape their black bellies across the treetops. And then comes the rain. We huddle in the downpour, cowering in the swirling genesis of a river creating itself. We are reminded in shocking clarity that the universe is not a place, but an event unfolding around us. That the river and the sky are actually flowing through us. We reach out our fingers along the surface of these truths and gasping, allow the breath we borrowed to rejoin the wind. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's incredible to be in this place and I was able to, to join you um, last, uh, last June yeah. and spend time in this, there are, there are you get a sense that there are re literally millions of heartbeats that rely on on any effort we can make to keep this place intact and safe yeah. safeguarded it's it's truly um a, a, it's a precious responsibility um we are i'm going to
play the announcement video and, and let's okay. talk about what we're committing to today. So we, Age of Union made an initial uh, investment in, uh, in Jungle Keepers, 625,000 USD back in 2021. We were working together. Yeah. We were able to add a, a fourth uh, section to the reserve, fund the ranger program, Huge. build a ranger station. Um, but today we've been, we, we were announcing that what we've been working on for the last uh, several months of a five-year plan for Jungle Keepers to really, truly plan an effort uh, to to protect the corridor. Uh, so maybe, uh, let's play the video and then we'll talk about the corridor. Sure. Yeah. Hi, I'm Dax Silva, founder of Age of Union. We're a nonprofit environmental alliance it's working with change makers on the ground to protect the planet's threatened species and ecosystems. We're thrilled today to announce a $3.5 million U.S. pledge to Jungle Keepers over the next five years to protect the Las Piedras River, located in the Madre de Dios region of southeastern Peru. As part of the Amazon Basin, the area hosts a pristine rainforest that has some of the most complex and rich ecosystems. This pledge will expand on Age of Union's 2021 initial investment in Jungle Keepers and allow them to create a protected corridor in collaboration and partnership with Indigenous communities and other local conservationists. I'm Paul Rosley, founder and field director of Jungle Keepers, and we could not be more thankful to Age of Union for this incredible gift. The Las Piedras River runs through some of the most crucial habitat on Earth. This is the Western Amazon, the headwaters of the largest river system on Earth. With this pledge from Age of Union, Jungle Keepers is going to be able to secure threatened habitat, protect endangered species, expand our ranger program, and continue supporting the indigenous people who are committed to protecting their natural heritage. From the ancient trees and all the millions of heartbeats in this region, Thank you from everyone at Jungle Keepers. This is a huge win for the Amazon rainforest. As the world's largest carbon sink, the Amazon rainforest plays an important role in the fight against climate change. And we have an important responsibility to protect this ecosystem for the future of the planet. It's, it's truly the frontline fight against climate change. Um, talk to us about the protected corridor that uh, that, yeah. that we're going to work on over the next five. Um, this this river, as you saw in some of the footage that I just shared for you, it's it's literally like you said, it's ground zero. This is the front lines of the sixth extinction. It's the front lines of climate change, of protecting biodiversity, because this is one of the few places that still is pristine. And something that people don't realize is that when you have millennium trees, you have these 500,000 year old trees, they're literally skyscrapers of life. When you look at, at these images of, of forests, there are thousands of species living on each one of those trees. And so each time we see an acre deforested, we're losing more and more, which is why what, what DAX and what Age of Union has allowed us to do is save millions of heartbeats, millions of species, and, and very effectively, because what we're doing is this, this entire effort has been led through the indigenous people. Um, 17 years ago, when I arrived in the Madre de Dios, I started working with a local man named Juan Julio Duran, and he, even 20 years ago, was saying, we have to protect this river. And at that time, I was at 18 years old. I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I didn't think that such things were possible, um, but we also hadn't seen the real deforestation begin. When the Trans-Amazon Highway came, we started hearing the chainsaws. We started seeing new roads. We started seeing the ancient trees go down. And, and that's when it really became apparent that if we don't do something, there's no one else who's going to do it. It's just going to keep getting worse and worse. And, and when you walk through these forests and when you live with the people in these forests, um, you know, the animals become you realize that they, that they can't speak for themselves, that there is, that there's no one that's going to help them. And so we've been trying to, I've been trying to act as a voice box for, for the wildlife and for the indigenous leaders in the Madre de Dios for, for such a long time. And it wasn't until Dax and Age of Union that, that we have had the support to begin actually slowing down the rate of deforestation that we're seeing. And now what we have on our hands is one of the most exciting opportunities I've ever seen to create a win for conservation. Yeah, and I, one, one of the things I'm excited about is, you know, it's about 250 square kilometers, but yeah. it, now we're, we're adding the RBO concession, the, the Pal, uh, Palomino, Palomino concession. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things I learned uh, from the from our, our initial uh, JK area, I think it was D, JKD, or JK4, five. Five, yeah. <laughs> that we added, um, that we were, that 
there was invasions about a month after we actually secured this land. So yep. talk to, to us in brief about the Ranger program, because we got to get to questions. But the Ranger program is absolutely essential. And this is where yep. we're engaging with a lot of local people. There's men and women on this, on this, on this crew. Talk about Rangers and how important they are to the effort. Absolutely. And so just like uh, when Julio began teaching me about the rainforest and I began, began trying to tell the story and get it out to the world, we had a woman from Montreal um, Dina Tulujas, who came to the Amazon and began developing our ranger program. And what's beautiful about this ranger program is that we're taking, literally, we have ex-loggers and gold miners. We have the people that were destroying the forest. And, and so many so many of us get this wrong when I, when I use social media or post about this stuff. So many people are like, the destruction of nature and these evil people. No, they're not evil people. They're hungry people. And they're people who are worried about their kids. And so we've, we've, the thing is we have a good relationship with all of the local people. And so we can sit down with loggers and negotiate with them. And for one of the concessions that DAX helped us protect, we actually were speaking with the loggers and they said, Hey, look, we can log this concession or you guys can protect it. And we were able to come in and preemptively protect it before they got through and ripped out all the Shiwawako trees. Right. Um, and so the ranger program now we're working closely with the local communities. There's two very important indigenous communities on our river, Puerto Nuevo and Monte Salvado, and both have beautiful culture that they want to protect. And these people in a lot of cases don't have a lot of connection to the outside world. They don't have a lot of support. You know, if they have a medical issue, they, they live days up river. And so Jungle Keepers has been able to make regular trips up there to support the local people, to give them jobs as rangers, um, to, to train some of the young women as rangers and teach them how to use drones and to monitor our forest loss it's, it's amazing it's really incredible yeah. what can happen when you engage with your which who you think is your enemy and turns out that and no one has to be losing here there's a couple of other programs and that that i'll go through really quickly before we just take a couple of questions before we have to wrap yeah. um there's uh, there's regeneration there's of course we're conserving a lot of uh, of um primary forest but there's there's some some restoration that can happen there's yep. an area that we're we're going to be protecting called rbo that can that restoration work yep can be done um there's uh, animal animal shelter uh, yeah. led by a local woman uh, Mag magali uh, that uh, you know a lot of wildlife in the amazon that's yeah. compromised by, by the 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 negative the damaging human activity of mining and and uh and poaching and yeah. and uh, and logging that there's what, what markets that add these animals end up in and there's animal rescue that has to happen yeah. and reintroduction um and then finally there's sustainability programs uh, maybe talk a little bit about roy sure. and what he's doing with uh yeah. with cochinando and conservando yeah and i just you know one of the things that amazes me about you is that so many people first of all wouldn't have come down on the ground with us in the in the river in the amazon um, but the fact that not only is Jungle Keepers being supported, but now we're able to encourage these local Peruvian initiatives. And so our BO is a group of women who are protecting river and trying to work with the communities more downstream to restore already yeah. degraded forest. Um, Amazon Shelter and what Magali does is, is some of the most inspiring work I've ever seen because this woman is completely committed to saving the lives of the orphaned animals that are the result of gold mining and logging. Yeah. And it's like when you have a baby howler monkey whose mother was shot, there's no one to take care of it. The animal will die. And she's the antithesis to that. She, 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 she's that, that light in the darkness for these animals. And then our, our final local project that we're um, supporting is Cocinando y Conservando, which is our, our one of our Jungle Keepers directors, Roy Riquelme, and he is using culinary local culture to engage local communities, to so put special. smiles on people's faces and warm their bellies. And um, he's truly like the Anthony Bourdain of the of the Western Amazon. He's just an incredible guy. And so yeah. yeah, it's pride in in, in local traditional uh, cuisine, and it's a, it's it's education. It's almost like uh, an ambassador for the forest in yeah. terms of its potential. Yeah, um, we'll take some questions before we have to wrap. Any uh, any questions to the audience? Yes. So uh, I just want to congratulate uh, Agent Union for uh, providing the gym. Oh, sorry, there's a mic coming. Hi, uh, Luis Fernandez from uh, Cincia. Um, it's a research center in Madre Dios. I wanted to congratulate Age of Union for, uh, yeah, Madre Dios represent. <laughs> um, I want to congratulate Age of Union for, uh, for really just investing in people that actually make a difference. I've uh, been following the, the work that Paul's been doing for a long time, and I think it's a, it's a wonderful uh, 
opportunity to kind of expand the work they're doing and to set an example for philanthropy yeah. <clears throat> that, that's based on science as well, but with application in a range of different things. Uh, the culinary work is, uh, I think, uh, uh, a really important ways because this is a place that has uh, been degraded because they're losing their traditions. In many cases, the indigenous community are not even speaking their languages anymore because of dilution, mm -hmm. uh, because there's so many migrants coming in. Um, but one thing that is, uh, I think, key is to provide a bulwark against um, new mining that comes in. Um, this is a place that has had a lot of uh, government action to suppress mining in other parts of the region, and there's spillover that's moving into places like uh, Las Piedras, Pari Manu, mm -hmm. um, and if there isn't essentially presence uh, with uh, protection and, and action, uh, they, will, they will go in. So I guess my question, so that's my comment, my question would be, how do you uh, kind of, uh, what are the programs to try to prevent any new invasions, not by your neighbors necessarily, but by people that are coming in, because this is a place that's on the triple frontier of a very mm. fluid area. Um, so yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. And um, I think that at this point, a lot of what Age of Union is doing is is creating. Uh, we've used the term runway, and that and that first of all, providing us the opportunity to to build some momentum. Because in conservation, you're constantly on your back and with no resources. And so to be able to stand up and start pushing forward, and I think that once we establish the Las Piedras as a corridor. And this is something that's very also important about this, this river and this region that we're working is that there are established major protected areas there. The, it's the biodiversity capital of Peru. But when we establish this connective corridor, it will unite the national parks and make this whole region stronger. Um, and I think that the more that the Madre de Dios becomes centered around conservation, research, mm -hmm. ecotourism, and the protection of biodiversity, that that eventually it'll become so much a culture, so much a part of the culture of all the local people and that it'll become so integral to their survival that that mining and, and logging won't be able to enter as easily as they are now. I think part of it is that it's so out of sight, out of mind, um, and that as we shine a light into the darkness that that it'll yeah. just it'll just gain momentum. Well, one of my favorite stories uh, that um, that I heard was the young children of, of, the, of the local town that's a, a bit of a logging town. Yeah. Over time, their aspiration is to be a ranger when they grow up. Yes, you know it's just yeah. a generational shift. Yeah. Uh, you know because these these men that have gone into gone to do logging, their bodies are broken. You know yeah. fr from the experience they have, they have a lot of physical uh, a lot of physical uh, injuries. You know, and so oh, they're destroyed. It's, you know, in order to 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 have this idea that uh, that protecting the forest is better than uh, better for the community and the long term health of this of this region. Um, and yeah, making that an aspiration is important. Um, you know, I, I just want to thank Paul and uh, Dina and, and JJ and Roy for being change makers that inspire people. That's the point of these projects as well. That's that's the mission is to make sure that uh, uh, that every that the general that that people yeah. That people are don't give up on the planet. Don't give up on things like the Amazon. It's 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 there's still so much to, to protect, and there's still so much opportunity. Yeah. And individuals of all stripes can uh, can 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 make it happen. And this can be the decade of action. We have a, I think, we have um, another I think we're out of time, but well, one more. Thank you. Oh, okay. Qu quick question, yeah. uh, Paul. What's the status of the land that of the corridor land that you're protecting? Is it indigenous territories or? So it's a mix. Um, some of the, some of the concessions we are acquiring through jungle keepers, and some of the concessions are held by the indigenous territories that are threatened by the loggers. The loggers will come in and try to pressure them to put to put roads onto their territories. And so what we end up having to do is support them legally because a lot of these people don't know how to defend in a, like a courtroom. Right, but do they have existing legal title or not? Some of them don't. Uh -huh. for the indigenous people. And so part of our work is helping them to get that. Right, yeah. And I just, just say I'm Anne Lambert with the International Conservation Fund of Canada. We work in the Madre de Dios uh, region as well. More Madre de Dios. There, there's oft, there are, they're often Brazil net concessions or yeah. they're, they're, they've got different yeah. definitions, but uh, they don't have, yeah. Yeah. Land title. All right, thank you everybody. Uh, last statement? Oh yeah, no, I just wanted to say like we, I, I truly believe that the next decade is gonna be the most important in history. There are species that have existed for hundreds of millions of years that are on the brink of extinction. And because of work like what Age of Union is doing, allowing people who are on the ground, in the field, indigenous experts to actually protect these species, I think that it's the first time in a very long time that I've seen hope. And I wanted to say 
thank you so much to Dax and Age of Union and everyone on, on Jungle Keepers and on the ground that's allowed us to do this. Thank you to the people of the Madre de Dios. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give me a hug, man.